slavery ends in New York in 1827. But there's strong sentiment in favor of the South for a long time after that. Why is that? Uh, what is it? What is this connection with New York and the yeah. Southern states? This is something not emphasized in our... I'm a New Yorker, as you well know, and I, we don't emphasize this in our view of our own history. New Yorkers, uh, we pride ourselves on being a bastion of liberalism, of tolerance, multicultural city. Um, it wasn't like that in the first part of the 19th century. Uh, first of all, slavery was a vigorous presence in New York uh, in the colonial era, and it lasted, as you said, all the way down to 1827. And even after that, there were slaves on the streets of New York. Southerners visiting the city were allowed to bring slaves along with them for up to nine months until 1841. So that's 20 years before the Civil War. There were still slaves visible on the streets of New York. But the key thing is New York was economically tied to the slave South. New York merchants controlled the cotton trade. New York bankers financed the expansion of slavery in the South. New York shipbuilders built the ships, New York insurance companies. Um, DeBow's Review, the most important Southern monthly periodical before the Civil War, which was actually published in New York City, said New York City is as depends on slavery as much as Charleston does. So the economy of the city was very closely tied to that of the South, and that led had also ramifications. Business interests wanted to appease the South. Uh, politicians were pro-Southern in their attitudes on the, um, uh, you know, on the sectional conflict. The abolitionist movement in New York was quite small and weak compared to other places. On the other hand, New York also had a vigorous free black community, people who were willing to take to the streets to protest the apprehension of fugitive slaves. Um, so in a sense, New York is a little epitome of the sectional conflict. New York is a house divided just like the nation itself.